nearly every generation has its own remnant. Beginning at the time of Noah, God's plan of survival was set into motion as he saved Noah and his family from the global flood. Here, in this story, we find the first sign of being a remnant, which is having a relationship with God. The Bible tells us that Noah was a righteous man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God and did everything just as God commanded him. It may surprise some people to know that there are several ancient texts that reveal bizarre details surrounding Noah's birth. Both the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Book of Enoch indicate that Noah may have been blessed in more ways than the Bible mentions. For example, a fragment called the Book of Noah says this about his birth. There has been born a son like whom there is none other, and his nature is not like man's nature, and his color of his body is whiter than snow and redder than a blooming rose, and the hair of his head is whiter than wool, and his eyes are like the rays of the sun, and when he opened his eyes, the whole house lit up. Now, the Bible says that Noah was blameless or perfect in his generation. Now, this makes me wonder just how different Noah was from the corrupt world he was born into. Like it was for Noah, being part of God's remnant today is not a popular club. We're mocked, laughed at, and hated. Just as Noah endured the storm, we too must endure many trials and tribulations. And so we find ourselves living in the days of Noah just as the Bible prophesied. In the same way Noah preached repentance, warning the people to turn from their sin, real loving Christians today preach the same message only to be hated, mocked, and scoffed at. Sadly, our world has rejected God and embraced paganism. As a result, the evolution of transhumanism begins to emerge. Even the so-called church has forsaken the commandments of God to gratify their own sinful desires. In fact, the Bible says that wickedness became so bad that the Lord was sorry that he had made man, and he was grieved in his heart. The Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. So the Lord opened up the floodgates of heaven and earth and cleansed the world of its corruption. Brothers and sisters, the path to eternal life is narrow and few people find it. Imagine an entire world full of wickedness except for only one family. Now, someone may ask, why would God bring such destruction on the earth simply because of immorality? Well, I believe there's more to it than immorality alone. You see, the Bible describes other significant events that occurred in Genesis chapter 6, which are also mentioned in the book of Jude and 2 Peter. Many scholars agree that the flood not only came upon the earth because of immorality, but also because of genetic abominations. One likely explanation for these creatures originates from an event that took place nearly 5,000 years ago. It was during this time something supernatural happened. The Holy Scriptures, as well as other biblically endorsed extra-biblical texts, have indicated that in the days of Jared, demonic fallen angels descended onto the earth. These creatures mated with women who gave birth to corrupted offspring which the Bible refers to as the Nephilim. There were giants on the earth in those days and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and bore children to them. The same became mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Most Bibles use the English word giants for the Hebrew word Nephilim, which originates from two words that mean to fall, be cast down, bully, or tyrant. The Nephilim were a result of an unnatural union between the fallen angels and human women. Furthermore, many believe that when Jesus said, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man, he was not only describing moral decay, 
but also the corruption of God's image and his creation. In other words, just like in the days of Noah, when demonic forces tainted human DNA, so shall it be once again before Jesus returns. These things are happening today through technologies like genetic engineering, CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing, bioengineered food, and genetically modified bacteria. Friends, the same thing is happening in our world today. Major events which are part of a larger agenda are being carried out by corrupt rulers to usher in the system of the Antichrist. Now, like I talk about in my series on the American church, the people of God have forgotten who they are, where they came from, and what to do. Because of this, the church has become biblically illiterate and fallen asleep. As Christians, we must know what the Word of God says in order to understand what to do as we approach the end of the age. The mainstream church would do well to dust off their Bible and actually read it. A storm is coming, and the consequences for our sin will ultimately lead us to destruction. But because God loves us so much, He has provided an ark of salvation through the Messiah. The door is open. All we must do is enter.